we are talking about twisters visual effects artist you know ben snow how are you doing very good how are you going listen man i get to talk to an aussie about some natural disaster <laughs> that he's not responsible for personally well technically you are for the visual effects but it's not australia trying to kill us no no it's true although you know we all play our part in the, in the bad weather situation that we have these days right yeah Yes, but your continent likes to try to kill everybody. These giant spiders. Yeah, fire. Spiders, we don't tend to have too many things. tornadoes or earthquakes. But right. wildfires, we kind of compete competitive with California in that regard. And you know, you know the this is an interesting film because it's twenty plus years since the original, and mm -hmm. this is a sequel. Yeah, it's it's also its own thing. It's not you know dir a direct connection with the original characters. I mean, named here and there, but when you look at the visual effects from then and how technology has become so advanced in comparison, it's like the difference between shooting a bullet and throwing one. Like, <laughs> how do you look at the original film and then try to keep it in theme visually, yet modernize it because we've be we've come so far along. You know, I worked on the original film and so did some of the other members of the crew, both on the uh, filming side and on the visual effects side. And it's been great for us to take advantage of the technology that we have available today and the better knowledge we have about storms and our much more powerful set of tools that we can deploy on, on, a, on, on the modern film. So it was a good opportunity, as it turned out, to revisit um, revisit the world. You know, now, I have no desire to become a storm hunter and go after these natural disasters. I know people in Oklahoma that will sit there and have confessed that they'll sit on their porch and go, oh, yeah, it's far enough away where I could watch it. <laughs> Not my thing. You know, uh, no, I, I, when it was funny. We, um, we, we, we were filming in Oklahoma, of course. And, of course, the storms roll in in the late afternoon across the prairies. And... Um, we got shut down quite frequently by these real ferocious weather that we had. On one of those days, Isaac Chung and I, the director and I, went storm chasing. So uh, Kevin Kelleher, our meteorologist, said, hey, we're not going to be filming anymore. Why don't you guys come over and join us on the, on the, it was on the border between Oklahoma and Texas. And so we jumped in my car and Isaac and I roared across and actually got a taste of real storm chasing. Was, was there an, ever an inclination to shoot the real storm? And, I and really them. wanted to do that, but for safety reasons, they won't let us. Like if the lightning comes up, you're not allowed to film. In one of the scenes, we actually built this beautiful, uh, it's a farmer's market set towards the end of the movie. And the set got destroyed by a, a storm while we were sort of locked inside, cowering inside the buildings, watching it getting blown apart. And then we had to rebuild it so we could blow it apart again with jet engines and fans and artificially, but film it doing it. So yeah, it's it's ironic that the very weather we were trying to recreate lovingly in the computer, we weren't able to always film in because of the danger to the crew. The irony is definitely not lost on me. The interesting <laughs> part would be is that if you had actually filmed a storm and then realized it wouldn't translate well, to film and go, eh, we just well, you know, we had a storm real. chaser team out there, so we sent out um, a you know, four times or something. They went out and shot a whole bunch of footage for us. We tried to use that as much as we could in the film, and it gave us a really both a great knowledge of how these things should look because you know our storm chasers were there in the heavy sort of hail and torrential rain and everything else the characters encounter. So the special effects team and the visual effects team both had really good examples of what that should look like. Plus it gave us sort of a basis for building our skies and that sort of thing. So it was a huge win and, a, and it let us have, have reality, you know, as much as we could in the film. Um, having worked on the first one and going into this and then with the reality of what's come about, you know, with actually having been able to chase a storm in real time, uh, the authenticity that you bring to it from the visual, visual aspect of it, how much more relief is it that you could take this to actual storm chasers and they can verify that, yes, this is something that we'd experience, uh, you know, visually at least, instead of 
going, oh, they made this up and it looks like the original King Kong, you know, where yeah. you can tell it's a model set in comparison. Yeah. Well, you know, I think with a realistic film like this, a uh, disaster movie with, you know, okay, everyone doesn't go to Oklahoma, but they know what a field looks like, you know, and you know what weather looks like. I think that's an interesting challenge because it, we have a lot better reference because there's so much YouTube footage, there's, you know, um, a, a lot more footage, but so does the audience. They're familiar with what tornadoes look like. And so there really was nowhere to hide. It's not like a fantasy film or anything where, you know, no one knows what it looks like and you can use a little bit of a, um, you know, the, your imagination will fill in the gaps here. Here we had to really try and be true to reality and lean into that and keep it as real as possible and then make sure that what we added to it, we always went back to references, real footage, that sort of stuff. Um, you know, maybe we make it a little more grand sometimes for, you know, dramatic effects. It's a movie, it's a ride. We want people to have fun with it. But we did try and anchor it always in in, in the reality because I think the audience knows so much now that you can't really cheat it. All right, Ben. So this begs the question, what natural disaster terrifies you the most? <laughs> ah, that's interesting. I was going to say spiders because you're talking about Australia <laughs> and, um, and being bitten by a spider is, is, is something I do fear, but it's not really a natural disaster, I suppose. Um, you know, I've been living in the San Francisco Bay Area for 30 years. Luckily, have not had a earthquake in the time I've been here, but that's something I don't really want to be. I kind of like tornadoes after this. I feel affection towards them now. So, And you can see them coming. With our earthquakes here in California, there's no true warning sign. No, no true warning signs. I mean, we've gotten so much better at predicting tornadoes and earthquakes. And frankly, you know, tornadoes do wreak some devastation. It's kind of uh, horrifying to see what they do. And I, the film does try and show a little bit of that. Um, but... It is funny when you are in Oklahoma, because when I first got there, I was like, oh, gosh, they might resent us, you know. Um, but in fact, they're really proud of their weather. And, you know, I, I think there's um, a lot of fans of the original film there. You know, on our crew, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I, I'm a storm chaser, you know, and I I got into it because of the original Twister. And so there, there's a lot of pride, I think, in in, in the fact that they have this extreme weather. Was there a more than usual difficulty in a visual effect where you knew what you wanted and the director was giving clear direction in what, in what he wanted, but for some reason it just wasn't clicking right or looking quite right on screen that took longer than expected? You know, um, it was a challenge to come up. The Fire was particularly one. There's a brief moment where the tornado sort of hits an industrial facility and we get a a moment where a finado forms and that was something we definitely wanted to do it was it's a cool and spectacular moment but we wanted to anchor that in reality because it's really not the idea of a tornado made of fire it's a usually what happens is there's a really hot like a a wildfire and all of the conditions of that heat create a rotating funnel and so that's the way we played it so we tried to make it um look very cool but still look very much like real fire real fire natives that you see in uh, in in uh, these extreme heat conditions oh no man i've seen all four sharknado movies and there's a catnado movie coming so oh really oh my god <laughs> wow so you know you got to step it up for the third one i you know i i i do love me some sharknado i gotta say so but we didn't uh, we should have tried to sneak a shark in now i think about that anyway <laughs> That, that's for the bonus features. We can see yeah. that in on the home release soon. Yeah. You know, uh, when, when you get to reflect on your work and everything is a sign of the time, you know, the technology for what Twister was to where we are with Twisters now, um, you know, I, it's interesting how people use modern, modern lenses to view the past and go, ooh, that doesn't look as good. But that was yeah. state of the art when the first one came out. Yeah. Is there ever a moment where you're tempted to just remaster something for yourself 
<laughs> now that we've no updated no the i'm actually against that and it's funny because i've worked on the star wars films and obviously george lucas has done a bit of remastering over the years i'm sort of the opposite i really dislike like you know when they restored um a scene from lawrence of arabia with uh alec guinness and it was clearly someone dubbing him many years later i'm like i don't know man <laughs> so no no i kind of like it in its pure form and very proud of the first run with um twisters we tried to honor the legacy of the first film and i remember running into some colleagues that that we would all worked on the original together and i told them oh look i'm going to be doing the new one they're like oh thank god one of us is doing it sort of thing i'm just so happy that one of our team was was able to do it because it was um a special film and um we definitely wanted to do it justice and then bring it to the next level for this one well, Ben, I will never go chasing tornadoes with you, but the next time I'm home in San Francisco, we're definitely going out for coffee. Thank you so much for talking to me about Twisters, the sequel. It's a homecoming for you, and congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I look forward to everyone getting a chance to see it and enjoy it themselves.